Hello everyone, today I want to start off a new series that I've had requested several times on the channel. This is going to be a basic programming with Ruby series. If you have no experience programming, this is probably going to be a good place to start. I'll try and keep things at a very high level so that you can hopefully you know, follow along, uh, even if you've never written a line of code before. If you already have experience, you might want to look for a tutorial series that focuses more just on how to do things in Ruby that you already know how to do in other languages, uh, because sometimes that can be a much quicker way to learn. Where here we might spend, you know, 10 or 15 minutes covering a single topic. Another video in an hour can get you up and running in a language, especially something like Ruby. That said, if you're brand new, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and start off really simply. We're gonna download the necessary tools. So if you're coding on Windows, you're gonna need to go to rubyinstaller.org, click on download, and then you'll be taken to a place where you have like a development kit uh, in a MSI installer, just like you're used to. So you just download it just like any other program. Uh, because at the end of the day, if you're writing code, uh, using a programming language, it's basically just another program on your computer that you're running. It's a little bit weird to think about because, you know, you kind of have to like layer it through it and be like, all right, well, where did the first programming language come from? Uh, but I would caution against going down that rabbit hole uh, because although it's nice to understand how everything goes from, you know, a bunch of pieces of machinery to uh, these high level programming languages, uh, it can be pretty overwhelming if you're just starting off trying to figure out how all of this stuff works. But okay, I have this downloaded now. I'm gonna go ahead and run this installer. It's gonna ask me to do a bunch of stuff. For the most part, we're just gonna stick with the default setup uh, because a lot of the options really don't matter. Like we don't need to read the license or whatever. We do wanna make sure we're adding Ruby to our executables in our path and to associate the RB uh, or dot RB extension with uh, Ruby. That's just so that we, if we have like a Ruby file, we can just, you know, run it normally and the computer will figure out like how to actually run it. We'll just go ahead, we'll say next for both of these and then we can go ahead and finish this. Now, while this is running, I'm gonna go ahead and move this over uh, because there's also gonna be a Ruby install on Linux you can look up, which is going to allow you to install Ruby uh, on your Linux OS. So here, you're just gonna go ahead and uh, you can use your package manager of choice. There's a couple different options. Uh, the only thing I would say these days is we probably have moved away from using like RVM. So you might want to choose one of these other package managers that are available to you. Maybe something like ASDF. This is just going to allow you to have multiple versions of Ruby uh, installed at the same time. So you can like switch between them. This Windows installer is really just installing one version, but it's easy enough to just grab another version that this isn't an issue. Uh, if you're on Linux though, sometimes you want to make sure that you have multiple different versions so that when you type like Ruby dash V, uh, you're using whichever version you need. Like in this case, I'm using a sort of outdated version already, but we can go ahead, we can grab one of these ASDF uh, VMs and it's going to have, uh, you know, a link to get started using it with the documentation. Now, but for the most part, if you're on Linux or Mac, I'm just going to say you probably should be comfortable enough handling this already. Like you've probably had to do this stuff before. Uh, so you can probably figure out whatever is right for your use case. In the case of Windows, we'll just go with whatever Windows does for us because we don't we don't know any better. Now that said, you might notice down here, I do have this, this terminal, uh, which is running Linux on my Windows computer. If you're interested in that, I would suggest looking up a Windows subsystem for Linux 2 setup guide. Uh, this is WSL. This is something for Microsoft that allows you to run a Linux shell on your Windows computer, which is great. You can run all of your usual uh, Linux commands here. I'm using Ubuntu here. Uh, and right now it looks like you pretty much just have to run WSL space dash dash install in a PowerShell window. And you should just have PowerShell on your computer anyways. Um, and that should set it up, but uh, I haven't tried this in like two or three years. And when I tried it previously, it required multiple steps. So I don't know if this actually works, but basically you install WSL and then you go over to the Windows Store, which yeah, it still exists for some reason. Uh, oops, uh, the Windows Store. And then in here, or sorry, the Microsoft Store. And then in here, you can just search for the Linux operating system. After you have WSL set up, uh, you can pretty much just like download a, a Ubuntu operating system if you want. So you can come in here and type 
Ubuntu, we can look for 2204. Sure, why not? Click on it. And then in my case, it's literally just an open button and that'll also work for you. Then you would install Ruby in there uh, and then you should be good to go. Now, in this case, I've run this. This should uh, be good to go now, I believe. Let's go ahead, we'll hit uh, one and then we should be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and type three now just to grab that Ming W. Now that we have all of these uh, installed, we should be good to just open up like a uh, command prompt and just type Ruby dash V. And now we can see we have this Ruby version here. At this point, in theory, you should be good to follow along with the commands that I run on my Linux uh, installation in your Windows installation just out of a command prompt because most of what we're doing is gonna be specific to the Ruby language, not specific to the operating system. So like over here, when we go to run a program, we'll run it with Ruby and then like our program, I don't know, name.rb. This will work both over here as well as over here. So hopefully at this point, everyone's synced up at least as far as this is concerned. Now, the second thing I'd like to urge you to install would be Visual Studio Code. This is a text editor from Microsoft. This is just gonna allow you to write code similar to like Microsoft Word, where it does some of the autocorrect for you. It has a bunch of extensions and stuff. You just click download. This one's pretty easy. You download it, install it. Uh, and then once you're done installing it, if you restart these terminal windows, whatever you're using, you should then be good to just type code dot wherever you need to to open up a Visual Studio Code instance in that specific directory. So like here, we can see I'm in slash code, slash YouTube, slash Ruby, beginner U1. Uh, if I type code dot in here, it'll open this up in my Visual Studio Code. I already have one open over here, which we'll just go ahead and take a look at. Uh, if you're using Windows and you're not comfortable navigating all of this stuff, there's a couple of tricks you can do. The first is if you can find wherever you wanna go in your Windows operating system, so like here I can go into like documents uh, and then I can like maybe open this up. You can just type code dot right here and that'll also work. But uh, probably an easier way of doing this is to just open up your Explorer, find wherever you wanna put this, maybe on your desktop, you wanna create a folder. So we'll right click new folder, we'll call this Ruby. And then in your Ruby folder, uh, you can just come in here, you can just right click and then you can click, uh, if you have the Windows Terminal installed, if you don't, you can, I think, go to the Microsoft Store and just search for Terminal, uh, Microsoft Store. Although I think at this point, Windows is bundling it with computers now, but if you don't have it, because you have like a computer that's older than a year or so, it should just be good to look for Terminal. Uh, and then it's the Windows Terminal, and then it's gonna be this gray one right here. And you're just gonna go ahead and install this. This will then also allow you to just right click and open in Terminal. Uh, there should also be an option where if you right click here, you can uh, open this in, uh, you know, with Visual Studio. If you don't have either of those, uh, you can also just come in here. You can type, what is it? I think you can type CMD and this will open up your command prompt in this actual directory, which is just right here. Uh, so like if we now type code dot in, in here, this will now open up uh, in that uh, specific directory. So we can like come in here, we can create a new file. We can just call this test.rb. And then if I come over here and I think it's like dir on Windows, we can now hopefully see test.rb over here. We can see it in Visual Studio Code and we can see it right here. So we know everything is synced up. So at this point, you're pretty much good to go in terms of writing code. Uh, but uh, there's one other thing I wanna talk about, which is going to be this little extension right here. We're gonna be using this one. This is the code runner extension. And what this allows you to do is, let's say you have a file called main.rb like I do right here. You have your first line of code, which is you know just printing something out to the terminal or the console or whatever you wanna call it. We can just come in here, we can say puts hello world. Uh, and then let's say you forget how to run this. Uh, in the terminal, the way you would run this is either with Ruby main.rb, and then you can hit enter and that'll work. Or you can type like rb main.rb That'll also work, uh, but sometimes that's too much work. So instead you can just click on this little plus button if you have the runner installed and it will just go ahead and run this file for you uh, in a much easier way where you can just you know very quickly test this. So you don't even have to type this every time. So if this is the way you'd prefer to work. You can even just hit like F11 and just full screen this while you follow along. In my case, I'll usually have a terminal over here. 
Uh, and then if we end up doing some web design stuff, maybe we move over to like Ruby on Rails. Uh, I'll also have uh, sometimes just a window up here so that we can look at the website while we work on it. But for this, uh, I just want to very quickly get you up and running with something that you can then follow along with. So in this case, first program has been written. We can run it by clicking a play button. We can see the code right here. We can make our files over here. Everything seems to be working. So that's going to do it for this first episode. Uh, we'll hopefully move on to some of the uh, actual programming in the following videos. Uh, it's just these are the types of things where if we don't get them set up properly, these are usually by far the biggest headaches for new programmers is actually getting stuff set up. So I just wanted to have this uh, have its own dedicated video. So for now, thank you for watching. and I will see you in the next one.